This is episode 5 of Total Drama Yokovachi Island, a reality TV show inspired by Total Drama Island. If you have not watched the other episodes, please do that now. Let's go ahead and check in on the Otter Outlaws. We are starting this episode off on a little bit of a serious sad note, but Z, he wakes up around 2.45 a.m. hearing like a sad distant, like very distant sound. And hearing the sound, Z kind of looks around and realizes that Shilo is gone. So he kind of looks around and he finds Shilo on the beachfront and he's like crying. He didn't notice Z was like coming up behind him or whatever. And you know, Z sits down next to him and he's like, hey, 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 calm down. What's wrong? What's wrong? And you know, Shilo, he just kind of looks at Z and he, you know, he takes a moment even wondering if he should even bother saying something. But he's like, you know, I've never felt confident. I'm afraid that, you know, since you and Seattle are so close and both like very smart and strategy, you're going to think I'm talking with Jenny and I'm going to betray you. And I don't want that to be the thing. I don't want you guys to think that. I'm afraid you guys are going to vote out Jenny, but she's my best friend here. I'm loyal to you guys, but outside of this game, I think me and Jenny are gonna get along, maybe. And Z's like, whoa, whoa, you, you, you overthinking it. I promise you, Shilo. Like me and Seattle hasn't even thought that. We haven't even talked bad about you. Just stop thinking about it. I, I can give you my word. You're safe. Not only are you safe, but you're chill and you're a huge help. And then Shilo's like, well, wh what about Jenny though? She, she's really cool, and I know she annoyed you, but she could be the fourth, like us four majority. And Z, he tries to explain like. Like, yeah, I understand that, but when it comes to the other two, Angel, I find her a really good help for the team. And Kata and Angel are like best friends, I think. So if I try to take out Kata, I, I don't I don't know yet. I, I don't want to take out Jenny. I know Seattle maybe wants to, but we'll have to talk. I promise you though, we're gonna talk about it and it's not gonna happen out of nowhere. But let's try not to lose. And you know, I I just I don't know though. Seattle might have made his mind up. And then Sheila once again. Yeah, he starts, you know, like tearing up, start to cry again. As he's like, well, well, hold on, hold on. I'm I'm sure we can talk to him, both of us, I right? And <laughs> that's when Shilo, you know, hearing this, you know, how sincere Z is, he gets really happy, comfort, he hugs Z. And even though Z tenses up, I, he hugs back. Maybe, maybe a little non-platonic, I have no idea. But let's get to a different try. It's 4.20 a.m. The only person up right now is Draco, or so he thinks. He is trying to search for an idol. He does not feel safe between the water well. He's looking up some trees. He just can't find it. And he's on his tippy toes trying to look at like a hole in some bark. But behind him, Pei scares him. He falls and she just starts laughing. And she's like, hot, you know, make sure to take a picture from your trip. You know, he gets pissed. He, you know, he gets, uh, you know, he's wiping his pants off. He said, fucking hilarious. What are you doing? Why are you up? Why are you here? She said, Oh, nothing. Just getting more blackmail on you is all. And he said, oh, really now? Tell them I was searching. I don't give a fuck. See what happened. No one care. You think you got shot me? You don't got shit? And Pei, you know, she laughs. She's like, oh, really now? Why are you so angry? You suck at idol searching, by the way. You know, she reaches behind her on some telltale, pulls out the idol and tosses it to Draco. She's like, there's the blackmail I have on you. This was dead ass inside the bamboo pole holding our tribe flag up. Day three, I found it. Amazed no one found it before me. You're right when you said this tribe was ass, because they are. And Draco, he's looking at it. He's looking at the, you know, the scripture and everything. It says, he's like, you actually found it? The fuck? The fuck? And she's like, actually, no. She takes the idol, pushes it down his pants, and she's like, you found it. I'm a head back so they don't get suspicious. Wait six minutes. Come back to camp. I'm gonna tell them you were getting water. Bye! And then she like, like skedaddles along and Draco's like bro I'm gonna die here and by 8 a.m. the entire shrimp shuffler tribe was up all doing their own thing and right now Casey and Amelie are assigned to keep the fire going with the wood they were given and Amelie I don't even know if she really likes it she says it's, it's kind of crazy Logan assigns herself to go get water one of the easiest chores and you can search for an idol while doing it I bet those three right now are searching for an idol and having us stay here on purpose 
And Casey's like, yeah, I'm not dumb. I know, I know. This is what she's doing. The three got marked up. You know, she marked, she shook like a bit. And Amelie, she gets up. She's like, yeah, I'm not doing this shit. You know, she just throws the sticks that were given to her at like, I guess the flag because she's pissed at the tribe. But when it hits the bamboo, Casey, her, her big ass ears, they pick up something. And Casey's like, wait. She knocks on the bamboo pole. It sounds hollow. And then she knocks on the other side holding the flag up. But that one sounds like it's actually full and not hollow like it has a denser sound and casey's like wait i gotta admit and so she has amelie crouch down she steps on her shoulder she reaches in there and she's like hey bitch what the fuck she grabs the idol and she shows amelie she's whispered but excited like look Look, look what I got. And Amelie is amazed at, you know, the events that just happened. But she smirks and she has such a devious smile. Casey and Amelie, you already know they plotted. The guys are gonna work on expanding their entire shelter, making the entire floor level very nice to sleep on. And then they're gonna try to make like sand beds where they make a frame and put enough sand where it's like goes slightly above the frame. And the girls, you know, they just kind of told them like, hey, we're gonna be going. And Amy Angel, she didn't even really want to go, but she didn't want to say no one looks suspicious. And she knows that she has to talk to someone because Seattle, Sheila, and Z for sure hang out with each other. And she can do numbers. She gets the math. And she wanted to climb this anyway. She's kind of here to view. She loves views. She likes, you know, landscape and everything. So she's leading in the front where Jenny and Kat are just kind of talking. And Kat's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of heights. This is kind of not my territory, but th this mountain ain't so bad. You know, we can climb up this. There's clear places places to go on you know there's very strong roots like sticking out of the side that we can grab onto pull ourselves up and Ginny's like oh my god cat you want to know what would be amazing and cat's like what what would be amazing and Ginny's like what if we found a water and it was streaming down the like the mountain we go up the water mountain we see just a whole bunch of red onions and we can use the onions to cook like in that movie holes have you ever seen holes that's a great ass movie and cat is like oh it, yeah that is a pretty good movie it's been a while since i seen it i watched it with my pet gerbil his name was larry wings and Ginny's like the fuck what kind of name is that? And Angel hearing this, she just kind of laughs. You know, she scoffs a little bit. And she's like, yeah, Cat, what kind of name is that? Cat's like, damn, it's Larry Winks. That's the homie right there. And you know, Cat eventually laughs. And for once, Angel's actually having a good time. She gets to see the landscape. Everything's going nice. While everyone is kind of doing their own thing, these two trying to cook breakfast. Draco, you know, being annoyed by pay. You know, like, what are you going to do with the idol? What are you going to do with the idol? What are you going to do with that? <laughs> you know, suddenly they hear like, like, hey, bro, I, I might need help. And all of a sudden, like, you know, very loud. I kind of need help. And so when they start seeing, like, the camera crew and everything rush over, everyone is now interested and kind of worried. And they see Aubrey in the swamplands kind of getting sunk by quicksand. And the camera crew's like, bro, I only get paid 11 an hour. I ain't, I ain't going to do I'm not risking my life. Everyone's just kind of looking. But then Reed kind's like, man, but this. So he does some George of the Jungle, Dora the Explorer shit. He gets on a vine, cartoonishly swings, and is able to pull Audrey halfway out. He swings back, pulls her fully out again and there it goes pause the camera crew in production is shutting off swampy lands for now until they can get a gate or something up there Aubrey's like yo recon thanks like th that shit is scaring me I don't know what was about to happen I was just walking and I sunk I was trying to put my foot out I lost both my shoes it's some bullshit and then not too long after that the boats arrive to collect everyone to participate almost entirely luck based immunity challenge let's go ahead and and see what the challenge is. The castaways arrive on the island to see Amaya gone. Seattle and Jenny quite disappointed along with Casey. They actually were interested in her. And then they noticed something right in front of them which is a huge 48 foot pyramid amelie you know she's kind of thinking about it. she was like wait amaya helped the most last challenge and y'all voted her out y'all fumbled y'all stupid and aubrey's like bite me bitch oh really bet mom they're making a title sequence looking ass and then chris is like shut up let me explain the game rules today campers is a game of speed and luck five members of each tribe will attempt to find the correct door inside of a huge pyramid and once it is used it'll be locked and no one else can use it only one may pass through a correct door a wrong door will 
will most likely be a brick wall or some even have a few surprises. There are three floors. Five will be eliminated on the first floor. Five will be eliminated on the second floor. If a team manages to have both of their people at the final two, not only will the tribe be safe, but they may choose what other team is safe and will not go to council. However, there is a chance that two teams can win this and then the losing team will automatically go to tribal council. Otters, you guys have to choose someone to not compete and it cannot be Kata again has to be someone else and angel's like oh easy bet i'll be out you know she just wants alone time some peace and everyone's like oh that was easy hell yeah let's get it everyone is at their starting line ready to start exploring the pyramid chris says ready set go and there everyone is first person inside the pyramid is z for the otters recon for the zebras and casey for the shrimp and immediately went inside sales says wait everyone oh we need to plan everyone else is just going sporadic and she's like what's it what is it what is happening what do you do what like you find something you got a plan what do you got and sales like we got a search and squad form checking doors no more than once if you see another player get fooled warn the others do not pre-check doors eliminate as much uselessness as possible and Kaz like oh that's a that's smart we, we we should like spit on the door if we get a trap or saw someone else get one and seattle he's a little bit gross at that idea but then he actually thanks about he's like hold on that, that actually makes sense hell yeah let's do that great thinking i will search by myself shilo z you guys are pair searching and kata and jenny you guys are pair searching let's get it yeah and then everyone else says yeah over on shrimp we see casey just flying like grabbing door handle after door handle pulling and all of a sudden while she's running she's stuck in place as it starts zapping and electrocuting her you know she cartoonishly like gets electrified unmobile for a second amelie seeing this laugh so hard goes to the door as after opens it and congratulations amelie you are the first person to find a correct door only 10 people can pass jenny and shilo searching together down the halls and everyone can kind of hear the echo of jenny talking this reminds me of the one time i was at my rich uncle's house he has a really hit rich house and part of it doesn't have a light because he wants to save bills and so it's like super spooky it's like when you open a whole bunch of doors and it's like the scooby doo scene it's a whole bunch of spooky you don't know what'll come out then you go into the door and everything is really nice but then you're scared because it's dark and all of a sudden she's like oh my god i actually got a door look at this one this one open shilo this one open look, 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 look. shilo congratulates her saying get in it which she do he says don't worry i'll get my own and then he starts searching for himself in which he uh bumps into z maybe fall on the ground a sus pose flustered getting up shilo runs away gets a door thank god he is on the next level him and jenny both making it zebras have to have someone in which very surprisingly they do congratulations aubrey even though the door right next to her draco grabs and all of a sudden like the door is like a little trap door and when he opens it bees come out they start stinging his ass he starts running both him and millie you know what i think this gives him so much energy to search doors they both probably find it suddenly on bottom now they're on top only four slots remain Z is really, really trying to find one. He sees Seattle suddenly have a big ass bag of rocks just fling on him for no reason through a door. He goes to help Seattle. Then, you know, he hears Kat and, you know, screaming happily. You know, she got a door herself. Shrimps are now really panicking. Honey's like, yo, what, what is going on, bro? We have to be doing something. And then they just hear Pay, you know, like, sucks to be y'all as she gets her own door. Two spots remain. Frantic searching a lot of them getting some bull clavs just straight up grabbing a handle and it was just super hot like home alone style but thankfully for the shrimp casey finds the correct door leading only one spot left and it is to be found by a very desperate z congratulations z seattle you are eliminated leaving four of the otters to go to the next round recon you are eliminated leaving four of the zebras however logan honey clav y'all did terrible y'all search better casey and omelie good luck the contestants who made 
made it past round one are about to start round two. Ready, set, and go. So immediately as everyone runs off, they kind of just do it normally, flying and trying to open doors. But cartoonishly, Millen and Kata just bump into each other. You know, Kata's saying sorry, Millen's saying sorry. They keep trying to like move out, but they keep moving left at the same time, right at the same time. Eventually, Kata just makes fun of this situation, starts dancing, and Millen just matches her energy. Both doing the Millie Rocker, son. Before Aubrey sees this, gets pissed, tell Millen to stop messing around and hurry up. Z and Shilo kind of searching close, and Z sees Shilo just get blasted by a trapdoor. Z quickly goes to Shilo. He's like, hey, hey, you good? What happened? You all right? Yo, clearly worried over Shilo, and this makes Shilo feel like very happy that he's even being considered and wanting a little bit more attention. Shilo's like, oh, my arm, ow. You know, Z starts rubbing her away. They, they 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 have their moment. Casey, she knows she can search a lot faster than Amelie. So when she actually finds a door, she quickly yells out for Amelie. Amelie comes over and she's like, I'm gonna keep searching. Where do you search? She tells, you know, make sure they strategize. And she's like, all right, come through here. Amelie passed, which is a huge strategical move on Casey's part. Because almost immediately, she is also the second person to find a door. The other team's getting nervous. Jenny's like, oh my God, Z, I don't know where to look. I've been checking everywhere. I just can't see anything. I, I'm getting very nervous. I'm afraid I'm gonna be eliminated. And Sheila's like, calm down, Jenny. You know, me, Z, Cat, everyone, we can just do this real quick. You know, all searching side by side. Jenny on the left finds one. And Kata to the right of them finds one. And Zelo and Z are like, damn, we about to fumble. Now the entire zebra tribe is looking at each other like, hey, 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 all of us are about to lose. We are about to lose this competition. We have to have at least one of us. And they're searching. They searching crazy. They want one of the spots. Shilo and Z, they're also really searching, especially Z, because they know if they find this, they win. But out of all four of these, Millen finds the last door, securing his team maybe a potential spot at safety. Unfortunately, Draco, Aubrey, Pei, Shilo, and Z, all of you have been eliminated from this challenge. Kata and Ginny carrying otters. Millen hella carrying carrying zebras and Casey and Amelie carrying shrimp. Now, as the final round starts, everyone waiting for two people to make it, signifying the winner. The real drama is happening on the sideline. Recon is kind of talking to Pei about like what her favorite like restaurants are, and she listed them off. She's like, oh, Panda Express orange chicken with the rice, pretty good. But I also like Popeyes, they got the best fried chicken. And Recon, he has his own food chain called Freckle Bitches, but he doesn't want anyone else to know that because he already got money his bread long but at the same time he's like i i don't know popeyes isn't really that good have you ever had freckle bitches and pay is like freckle white and recon is like i see you've never never been down south pause but pay isn't really interested because past recon she's looking at aubrey and draco for some reason draco's glasses are on aubrey and aubrey's beanie is on draco just giggling having a good time and pay is is like hey hey cut it out y'all cut out you know get your beanie back get your glasses back we got root for our team yeah let's go millen let's go millen she wants nothing to do with aubrey wanting draco or any of that she said hell no i don't care if it was recon flirting with draco where angel is kind of noticing the same problem she's noticing that z and sheila are super engaged in conversation talking to each other big smiles in seattle he also noticed this is uh, like a little bit because it used Used to be him, Zelo, and she talking all the time, but now he's just noticing that Z and Shilo kind of conversating hard with each other instead of like a group thing. And Angel, I feel like she just kind of whispers to Seattle, like, I, I know you see it. You're not dumb, Seattle. You're not dumb, but uh, that's all I'm gonna say. And Seattle, he just kind of, kind of just looks forward. He hears her. <laughs> oh, he hears her. He, he, he doesn't want to have an opinion. He doesn't want to have to have an opinion. Not right now, anyway. Because she's clearly trying to hint at him that these three 
there's clearly a wheel. Meanwhile, Shrimp kind of chilling low key, and it's not even fair, cause Honey, Clav, and Logan all talking, having a good time, being like, "Man, I hope we win. It would suck if we didn't," you know? And they just joking about it, cause they know they save. How are you three gonna do the worst in the challenge, but be all right with trying to, you know, get rid of Casey or Amelie? That's crazy. For the sake of them, I hope they win. It's like KC, more like KC. And Logan just starts belly laughing and then pulls out a joint. <laughs> but in the middle of everyone conversating, waiting for someone to be the first winner out the pyramid, congratulations. Casey, you have won it for your tribe. You are the first person out the pyramid, immunity winner. And if Amelie makes it out the pyramid next, you guys have full power. Amelie versus Millen versus Jenny and Kata. I mean, Jenny just opened the door and a whole bunch of like glue just splattered on her and then feathers, you know, basically the chicken treatment running around with like, you know, a chicken, which might have actually paid off because she actually ran, not, you know, opened it, but ran through the correct door, meaning otters, congratulations. None of you are going home. Same thing with shrimp. I'm so sorry. Zebras, one of you guys are going to be eliminated, sent home, and you guys once again lose and sent back to tribal. I think they're all pissed. I think they're all just kind of looking at each other because Draco and Aubrey were already kind of tense from Pi doing her bullshit. Recon's just confused why Pay did that. Pay Pi, you're your decision what you want to call her bitch loves pie so maybe that could be your nickname and no one's blaming mill and everyone chill with miller right now because he tried his best they i think they all just have a little hate circle right now otters for the third time in a row you guys are safe once again they're all celebrating extremely happy so i was like you know that's that's it guys you know huge help kata huge help jenny thank you so much yeah and everyone goes yeah except jenny she goes boss shrimp once once again, you guys are safe. You lost once, and now it seems you guys are ready to take this seriously. All of you earned it. Congratulations. Both of you may head back to your tribes. Speaking of which, we see the Zodiac Zebras all finally arrive after a very depressing walk. And seeing everyone kind of ticked off, Recon is like, Hey, at the end of the day, this was a luck game. And so I think, and immediately Pay cuts him off. And she's like, well, you want to know what I think? I think maybe if Draco and Aubrey wasn't outside of the game and while still in the pyramid smooching and talking shit on Millen, we might have actually fucking did it. Aubrey, Draco, both flabbergasted, immensely confused. Millen is pissed because why is he getting shit talked on, especially being the last one there. Draco wants to say something so bad, but he knows about the idol in his pocket, so he just clenches his fist walks away. Aubrey and Pei just give each other scolding looks and so Millen and Recon just kind of go to the ocean. Yo, chill out. Millen already super angry. Draco screaming to Pei that she's crazy as Aubrey goes after him. Pei just kind of laughs when everyone isn't around. She looks at the camera and goes, he loves me. Aubrey and Draco obviously sitting down. Aubrey, she lost to Maya and she felt like she wouldn't find anyone in this game. But now she feels a huge connection and alliance within Draco. They're talking about their home life. Both of them kind of grew up a little bit rough. Aubrey is here for her and her, you know, future, but not only herself, her brothers. Draco humbly finds that respectful. And I think Draco is like, he, he doesn't want to say he has the idol just yet, especially, you know, to Aubrey just yet. Because he doesn't want, you know, her saying to use it on her or use on him because he wants this in the long run. However, he does say, you know, don't mention this to anyone. I'm pretty sure Recon will be on, you know, be on board. We might have to vote pay. Meanwhile, Millen and Recon. Millen's talking to Recon like, I did the best. I, I, you know, I was great on this team. I tried my hardest. Amaya doesn't like me. She talks shit on me, apparently. Pay is the only one that understands me here, and she tries her best to get along. She tried telling me that Amaya liked me, but Amaya apparently just wanted to do that for strategical purpose. Now, Drake 
going off here talking shit. I'm just being, I'm a nice dude here. What's going on? And Recon, hearing this, he he does understand and he's a very sympathetic person. He doesn't want Millen to feel bad or like he's being targeted unnecessarily. So I feel like Recon is just like, here, let me, let me talk to Draco and see what's up. And so I think he calls Draco over. You know, they talk, you know, near the fishes. But little does Recon know that Aubrey was kind of sneaking by and eavesdropping as they talk. And Recon, you know, just kind of talks to Draco because he does kind of like Draco. You know, saying, hey, I think Millen really wants to target you or Aubrey. I think Pay might want to target you or Aubrey. I think the easy vote tonight would just be, you know, backdooring Aubrey. And Aubrey comes out the bushes pissed. She don't give a fuck. She, you know, she, oh, she's undoing her earrings. You know, talking about what the fuck you mean. What, like, actually, what do you mean? What do you, so Millen just decides now? Millen the tribe? Mil, you know, the Zodiac Millens? Thank for yourself. We don't got to go with him just because his feelings are hurt. And dead as me and Draco weren't even flirting or anything like that. We just, like, switched hats and shit for a second because I'm bored of wearing this wet-ass beanie. It's cold out here, dawg. Sometimes it's hot. Why is it hot and cold at the same time? This is some bullshit. And second off, we ain't ever even talk shit about Draco. I don't know where Pei had her episode from because that is not what happened. And Pei, just like Aubrey was, was also kind of creeping in the woodwork. She comes out and she's like, bullshit in the pyramid. I basically saw y'all trying to wear the same pair of glasses at the same time with how close your faces were. And then outside, you were basically having a heart eyes as you were shoving them on his face. Yo, Aubrey and Draco looking at Pei exactly like how I think they would be. Aubrey, you know, she tried to defend herself. She's like, you are doing this without any credentials, any proof. And Pei just holds up her hand, you know, snaps, you know, she's like, hey, hey, dialogue canceled. And then she just turns around and leaves. Millen seeing Pei, you know, come back mad as hell, he comes over there and he's like, hey, why did y'all insult Pei? Draco just gives him a blank stare and he he's like, you know, are you that stupid and gullible? And Melon, you know, already thinking they were talking shit about him, even though they realistically weren't. He's like, all right, whatever. And this kind of makes Recon mad too, because Recon is also under the impression they potentially talk shit, and this only makes him believe it more. And there it is. It is time for Tribal Council. As they arrive to Tribal, they see Chris there, big smile on his face, ready to ask questions and get someone eliminated. Chris's first question is, all right, Melon, you were the last one to keep searching for your team. However, you guys lost. As the person who carried, how do you feel about this Tribal Council? And Millen, he already has a plan in his head. He already know who's going home. He's like, Chris, I'm mad, I'm pissed, but I feel good. Because I know I'm safe. I know who's going home, too. And Aubrey kind of scoffs and is like, oh, is that so? And Recon, stepping up for Millen, tired of the shade, said, yes, it is so. Millen is a player just like the rest of us. Aubrey just kind of, you know, stares at Recon. And she's like, dude, when you watch this season back, you're gonna feel like the rock that Patrick got to go in the snail race. Cause you dumb, you ain't doing shit, but somehow you're still winning. What are you doing? You're throwing, how can you not see they're conspiring? And Melon's like, me and Pei aren't conspiring. She just happens to be the only one here who is a nice person and treats me decent besides Recon. But Pei talks to me on personal levels. She understands. And Chris is like, Draco, Millen is talking about your girl crazy. Aren't you gonna stop her? And Draco's like, Pei is, is a friend. That is it. Make that strictly clear. However, if she keeps telling lies, she might not be so friendly. And Pei's just like, calm down. I see you over there, Toodaloo. Recon, you have both sides kind of fighting for you to view them as the correct side however someone probably has to be wrong so how do you view this recon is like i might be wrong i might be fooled if i have to i will apologize in due time because everyone has ignorant moments and if i have to learn from this so be it but i'm gonna go with my gut because it hasn't failed me yet and with that it is time to vote everyone kind of takes turns voting all going up writing down a name of someone they would like to see eliminated from this game and there it is we have all the votes if anyone has an idol and you would like to play it the time to do so is now no one speaks up. Draco is the only one with an idol, but he doesn't say anything. So Chris says, all right, time to get to the votes. The first vote goes to Recon. The second vote goes to Draco. The third vote goes 
to Aubrey. The fourth vote goes to Pay. That is one vote Recon, one vote Draco, one vote Aubrey, one vote Pay, one vote left. And the third camper eliminated from total drama, Yokovachi Island. I'm so sorry, Aubrey, you have been eliminated. You received two votes, that is enough. Aubrey, you know, feeling just like Amaya did. She's like, y'all are actually the dumbest team in total drama history, and I've seen Packetail Island. Y'all do what you want. I'ma be chilling with Amaya, talking shit, laughing at y'all. Yo, I don't even gotta be out here that long. I got a feature. I wasn't even here long enough to really get hungry. But y'all starve. I'ma have my kimchi. I'ma have my my steak, my eggs, my potatoes. Y'all y'all deal with rocks and rice, little bitch. Recon, hearing how passionate Amaya was, and now how passionate Aubrey was, he. He starts having second thoughts because he's willing to trust his gut. But, you know, dead people don't lie, you know, type shit. So why would these two keep on holding this even though they're gonna get out and we're gonna see it by the end? Why would they stick to this lie? Why would they be so passionate? And why the hell is Pay smiling to the left of me? But... All those questions might be answered next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. You guys watching is such an amazing support. Let me know anything you have to say. And I dare every single one of you to have a good day.